My name is Michael Kremer, I am professor for theoretical physics at uh, RWTH Aachen. I did my PhD at Mainz University in 95 and then became a scientist at DESI in Hamburg. I worked there for two years and then moved on to a laboratory in Oxford, uh, Great Britain, for two years uh, and then I was a fellow at CERN for another year and uh, in 99 I became an associate professor at Edinburgh University and in 2004 I joined the faculty here in Aachen. I'm a particle physicist, so I work in particle physics theory. And particle physics is about the ultimate building blocks of matter. What are the smallest constituents that we have in the universe? How do they interact? Um, how is matter built up from these small constituents? So if you look around in the world, everything is very complex and the structure is very um, diverse, but everything really is made of very few particles. Electrons, two types of quarks, and two forces. And atoms are built of these small constituents, and molecules are built of, of atoms, and so we can describe everything we see in the world uh, by just a few constituents. So one of the fundamental questions that we are trying to solve is how particles uh, acquire mass. So the elementary particles are massive. If they were massless, they would move with the speed of light and atoms would not exist and uh, matter would not exist in the way that we know it. So it's important to understand how these particles acquire their mass and what we think is that there is a field, the Higgs field, that is everywhere in the universe and because particles interact with that Higgs field, they get mass. And so one of the big questions now is, is that really the mechanism that uh, gives mass to particles? And we have a very good indication because we discovered the Higgs particle uh, last year at the LHC at CERN, and the Higgs particle is an excitation of the Higgs field. So if the Higgs field exists, then there is also a Higgs particle, and we found that particle, and we want to study all its properties to understand whether this is really uh, the right mechanism to explain mass for elementary particles. The Higgs field gives mass to all the particles that we know, the electron, the up quark, the down quark, um, and all the particles that we are familiar with, but there is uh, some type of matter in the universe that we don't know about, so-called dark matter. We know about it because uh, it um, acts through gravitation with other bodies in the universe, with galaxies and with stars, and it distorts the motion of these objects, but we don't see this dark matter directly. We cannot observe it with light or other radiation. So it's a mysterious form of matter that makes up 80% of the matter that there is in the universe. Uh, and so this is one of the central questions of physics these days. What is this dark matter? Um, and we believe, or many people believe, that it could be an elementary particle that has not been discovered yet. And so it's very exciting that these questions about the universe as such, and the mass in the universe, and the formation of the universe, is really linked to particle physics questions through dark matter. Maybe we can produce dark matter particles at the LHC, uh, we can study their properties, maybe we can de uh, detect them through observations of the universe or maybe in the laboratory. So in my group, um, my students and my uh, postdocs work on calculations that predict um, the production cross-section for dark matter particles at the Large Hadron Collider, predict the um, signals that we could observe uh, with uh, satellite experiments from dark matter annihilation in the universe, and ultimately what we try to do is we would like to put all these observations and informations together to uh, develop a sort of more complete theory of what dark matter could be. And that really needs all the different components, the uh, collider physics component from the Large Hadron Collider at the LHC uh, in Geneva and the component of dark matter observations from astrophysical sources. And we are trying to put these things together in a coherent way. So my group, what we do is we uh, do analytical calculations with pen and paper. So we have a certain theory of dark matter, for example, and then we work out the consequences by making predictions. Uh, we often use the computer to um, aid our calculations. Um, and of course, it's important to learn also the theoretical concepts that um, are behind all those theories. And in practice, that means that we work in small teams typically of three or four people, students, postdocs, PhD students, and often we collaborate with people at other universities in Germany, but also internationally.
Thank you.